These are all good things, though. <laughs> you got an 8 no football team, and every time I bring the legendary voice, Merrill Reese, in on that, what does Merrill always tell us when I say, Merrill, you're 8-0? No. <laughs> I say, let's go 1-0. Oh. <laughs> I'm I programmed. <laughs> Merrill, th th this is such a great story, though, here. I mean, it's got to be a lot of fun to watch a kid who everyone thought when they first drafted him, and I'm talking Jalen Hurts, they thought he was going to be a seatbelt, a safety belt for Carson Wentz. And to see how he's – I thought he'd get better, Merrill, but have you been shocked by how fast he's gotten better? To a degree. To a degree. I was not one of them, one of the people who questioned his skill or questioned drafting Jalen Hurts at the beginning. I had seen him at Alabama. I had seen him at Oklahoma. I knew things about him, the fact that he had been a, a winner at every, every level of football from – playing high school for his dad and going on to championships in Alabama and Oklahoma. I, I had watched him, and I thought he was very, very talented. So I know that they, they built the case by saying we always have to draft a quarterback and we always have to protect ourselves in case there's injuries. But let me tell you something. Um, he is so special. Now, the difference between Jalen Hurts right now and where he was last year at this time is amazing. But he is a football junkie. He loves it. He went. He spent the summer with Tom House out in California. He worked on his mechanics. He had all the natural ability of the world. And he's bright. And he honed it. And he's dedicated. I think his, his profession is quarterback. And I think his hobby is football. Absolutely. Merrill, Pro Football Focus put this out there that the Eagles are the worst tackling football team in the league. Does that concern you moving forward, especially when you're going to be playing some pretty good running attacks? Aaron Jones with the Packers. You've got Derrick Henry coming up. Hey, the kid on Monday night, Antonio Gibson, they can run the football with him too. Are you concerned about that at all? No. No. <laughs> yeah. You know why, Dan? Because the Eagles have now gone 17 straight weeks, uh, seven, seven straight weeks of giving up 17 points or less. Jim Johnson told me that was the magic number. And I would, I would even expand that a little bit because there's more passing now uh, to, to 20. But if you can keep a team under 20 points, you are, you're, you're going to win 85 or 90% of your games every week. And so it doesn't, it doesn't concern me. I think, I think Nick Sirianni, uh, said something on the show the other morning on WIP with Angelo Cataldi. And he said that we have to clean it up. We have we can't be sloppy. But he said, I think it's a product, a product of being too intent on taking the football away. So this team leads the world with plus 15 in turnover differential. So if you're so intent on stripping the ball, you're going to miss some tackles from time to time because you get away from your fundamentals. So they will address that. This is a this is an awfully good defense. There's no doubt about that. But so so to to be picky, I'm concerned about tackles. So they'll learn to tackle. <laughs> they'll, <laughs> they'll they'll work it out. But I, I'm I'm more concerned about points, and rather than this and that and this and that. Listen, they they played Dallas when they had Zeke Elliott. And, you know the, the Tony Pollard. They beat them. They, they shut down Dalvin Cook, didn't they? T.J. Edwards was all over him in that game. I mean, Dalvin Cook's pretty pretty premier. So I am I concerned about it? No. I'm more concerned about my putting right now. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, <to> be <laughs> okay, I love it here. That, all right. How about Jordan? I'm worrying about every morning. Gee, is their tackling good enough? No. I worry about, did I read the break correctly? <laughs> <laughs> I love it here. How about Jordan Milano? Last two weeks has been given up some pressures and hasn't really looked himself. And actually, you know what, Merrill? I would even go here. You know, since that injury, I don't know. Maybe, you know, he's trying to overcompensate a little bit, but he's given some pressures up. I heard him on IP myself. 
a couple weeks ago with Rob Ellis, and he was talking on he was his biggest critic that he's got to play better. Um, are you concerned about that a little bit? Because again, this is kind of like a long bye here. You got eleven days of the next game, yep. and well, I think that's good. I think yeah. that's good against Washington. I, he was coming off a rib injury. I mean, he was coming off his shoulder injury. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't a hundred percent healthy. And believe me, if you're not a hundred percent healthy, playing two games in four days is uh, it, it's really really tough. And then throw a travel day in there too. But he'll. He's too good not to bounce back. He'll be fine. Merrill, I tell you, I watched that kid Mark Edwards last night. Then you watched Jason Kelsey. Have you been surprised by the development of Dallas Scott? Dallas Goddard, he's not Gronk, but I'll tell you what he does. He blocks as good as it, maybe the best tight end that we're talking to the premier ones. He's, his run after he catches it is superior. I mean, he, he has a nose for the end zone. He's physical as hell. Have you been surprised on how he's developed since he's been given the starting job? Yeah, I, a little bit because he's that good. He's that good. You know, I, I was at the – they have on Tuesdays, they have the coordinators out for uh, about 15 minutes each. And I, I asked Shane Steichen, who was the Eagles offensive coordinator, if he felt that Dallas Goddard had approached the level of the elite tight ends. And I named a couple of them. I named, of course, uh, I, I named uh, Travis Kelsey – and George Kittle, and Shane Steichen said he's there. He's there. There's nothing he can't do. With the ball in his hands, he's he is tough to bring down, and he's got great hands, and he's a great blocker. And and Nick said something about that, too, that he, is, he has reached the level of the top tight ends right now. He deserves, he deserves to be considered for the Pro Bowl as one of the best at his position. Absolutely. And Andrews, um, I don't believe he even played last night, but – Andrews being on that team, he's one of the elite guys that's in the NFL. Let me take you on the defensive side here, Merrill. The play that CJ has and how he has played and picked up the defense, he's been one of the most impressive guys on that defense. And I'd say this to you, Merrill, maybe CJ is the best defensive football player that Howie signed this offseason. I mean, has he, has he surprised you in his play? Five INTs already. Yeah, he's terrific. He's terrific. Although, um, you know, maybe the stats aren't there. He's got a couple of interceptions too. Uh, Bradbury, uh, James Bradbury has been the perfect, perfect complement to Darius Slay. I mean, Bradbury's been tremendous. And uh, listen, they, they, they've done a great job in plugging holes. And they always talk about upgrading in the National Football League. They've done that. I mean, Kaiser White doesn't have the stats, but he's played very well also. They've just been... They've just been an upgraded football team there. Oh, well, how about when you talk about impressive, how about Hassan Reddick? I mean, there's a guy who's made an impact also. I mean, he's got uh, five and a half sacks, and he's just a really, really big, big factor in that defense. So there are a bunch of them. They've done a great job uh, in personnel acquisition. You think we'll see more uh, reps coming up on Monday for Robert Quinn because I think they'd like to get him in the rotation. He only played a few reps this last week. Yeah. I think they just needed some time to acclimate him to the system, but I do believe that he'll play more than more than the 10 reps or the six that he had the first week. I, I think he'll be uh, in that 20 rep category. Merrill, do you know that this is probably going to be a super week for you when you call the Washington team? Do you understand why? Well, um, because I can say that because they're the commanders. No, because you don't have to go to that shit box FedEx field. <laughs> oh my goodness! But, but I already went there. <laughs> we, we went there earlier in the season. Eagles, this is the second game. You can't take back what's what's gone. I did sit there, and you know what? It's not the worst, Dan. It's not the worst. You know what's worse? Tell me. Miami. Really? Old Miami. Joe Robbie, which is now a hard rock. Yeah, it's, it's a hard view. It's, it's for a broadcaster. <laughs> We're sitting in the corner of the end zone. You're blocked out from part of the field. I mean, when you're there, you, you're just watching it off the monitor. The, the broadcast, and it's closed in glass. It's an awful place. Awful, <laughs> awful. Now, I'm not talking about the stadium if you're a fan. 
Yeah. But once upon a time, when it was Joe Robbie Stadium, we sat on about the 35 yard. I don't know if anyone cares about this, but we sat on about the 35 or 40 yard line, middle level, looked down on the field, had a great sight. Now it's worse than Washington. At least Washington, when they're on your side of the 50, it's fine. It's fun. In fact, the other night we were at uh, at NRG Stadium, and we're we're so far up. The only problem is every now and then you're blocked out from the action because a, a plane flies by. <laughs> That's right. And the Astrodome's right next to the thing. It's it's so hot, but you have a good view of the yeah. field. You don't. Miami is is worse. I'd like to say that Hard Rock Stadium is worse than FedEx. Wow. Meryl, I, gotta end, I want to end with this with you. I watched the um, highlights that the Eagles put with WIP. Your spotter, Mike Quick, yourself, watching you guys work together there like that, how long has that crew been together? Because I'll tell you what, you got I mean, you're spectacular on the call, but you can't be a spectacular play-by-play guy if you don't have a great team around you. And boy, it just looks like you have a spectacular team around you. How long have you guys been together doing that? Well, Billy Werndell, who has been my has been my spotter for uh, of the forty six years that I've done it, has been my spotter for uh, probably thirty eight of them. Wow! He, he had left and done some television for a while and moved out to San Diego. You must know Billy. Uh, they called him Philly Billy. Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I forgot he was on 1090. Yeah. So Billy's back here. So Billy has been back as my spotter for the last five years. But overall, he's probably done 38 of my 46 years. And uh, Mike, Mike and I have worked together now. Mike is in his 25th season as the color analyst. And it seems hard to believe that that he's been done playing for 25 years because he was a five-time all-pro wide receiver. And my producer, Joe McPeak, who ties the whole thing together, he's been around with me for about uh, 35 years. And my uh, statistician, Terry Small, has been there for uh, a good 25 years. So we've, we've, we're what you would call a seasoned crew. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 what a great crew. I watched that highlight reel with, that they put together every week, and it is really it's really fun to watch and really fun to see a great play-by-play team all working together there and how everybody doesn't step on everybody. It's really wonderful. And it's always awesome to you, Merrill, to find time for me. Thank you so much, my friend. Thanks, Dan. Have a great day. You got it. That is the legendary Merrill Reese and voice of the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. You got to watch that, watch that reel that WIP and uh, the Eagles put together. It's really awesome. And how they've had this team together like that and how they present it to the fans. No wonder everybody's in love with Merrill Reese. All right, hit the like button. When we come back, don't forget, Big Sills NFL Power 10. The top quarterbacks heading into week 10 of the National Football League. Who are they? Hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. It's 